17 May 73, Musical Mosaic, East Africa, Program Special, Talent, Faini, and Group. The drum which you just heard is called Umpunyi and plays the perhaps the simplest beat in the complex rhythmic organization of the Nankasa dance of the Baganda, one of the largest tribes in East Africa and the largest in the country of Uganda. The Nankasa dance is a relatively recent innovation of an older and more traditional dance called Baksimba. The Nankasa dance is made up of two sections, the older Baksimba section which is more reserved in nature, and the newer section, which is much more faster and frenzied, called Morgala, in which the dancers dance with such abandonment and swing their legs in such a way that they feel they may become disjointed, hence the term Morgala. We'd like to share with you now some of the instruments and exciting rhythms of the Nan Casa dance, starting first with the Baksimba drum and rhythm. It's made up of a center beat, some ringing beats, and finger taps put together in this rhythm. We next have joining the back simba the umpunyi drum which you first heard. The next drum to enter is called the nankasa drum. It's the smallest drum and the only one played with sticks, but a very important drum because it gives the orchestra its name and also it signals the orchestra when to stop. The drum enters with a flurry and then proceeds with its standard beat, which sounds like this. In order to signal the rest of the group to stop, it must first get their attention. It does this with this beat. And finally, the cutoff signal is given. The last drum to enter is the long drum, or ingullaby. It's the only one which has a skin which comes from a water lizard. It's played with a center beat, a ringing beat, and some finger taps, put together in this rhythm. it's the solo drum, it must cut through the rest of the orchestra. It does this with a very raucous finger slap, which sounds like this. We'd now like to put all the drums together in their order of appearance. First the back simba, then the umpunyi, nankasa, and ngalabi.
would now like to add the sounds of maracas and the box rattle to the drum rhythms which you just heard. Maracas, of course, are found all over the world, but the African musician combines two rhythms at the same time. In his right hand, he plays groupings of three, while with his left, he plays groupings of two. We'd like to demonstrate this with the aid of the umpunya. First, the right hand. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And now, the left hand with two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And now both at the same time. The box rattle sounds very much like the maracas, but it's a little softer and more subtle in nature. It sounds like this. Before we combine the maracas and box rattle with the drums, we'd like to show you a horn which is sometimes played by the musicians to encourage the dancers to do their best. The dances go on for a good length of time and sometimes the dancers tire. And so the musician will pick up the horn which comes from a gazelle and blow a very loud and boisterous si a sound on it to encourage the dancers. Now we'd like to have the drums, rattles, and horn combine for the non casa dance. types of xylophones found in Africa, some of a temporary nature and others of a more permanent type. Of the temporary xylophones in Southeast Africa in the Valley Tonga, they play a xylophone that they just cut four notes from a tree and put them across the player's lap and play it at planting time. Once the crops are planted, the notes are burned, and next year, when it comes to planting time again, they'll cut new notes and play again. Of the more permanent type, I'd like to show you a xylophone from West Africa, which has gourd. The gourd resonators have little holes in them, and these holes are covered with a membrane which comes from the nest egg of a spider. This gives the tone of the xylophone a buzzing sound. xylophone is played by one player using soft rubber hammers. We now go to East Africa and show you the xylophone which comes from the Baganda. This xylophone has a unique technique uh, which uses three players.
The notes were originally put on the stems of a banana tree, but this is a, a modern uh, carriage which the notes are placed on. We're going to demonstrate this technique by showing you the three parts and how they're put together. The first part has three notes in this piece that we're going to use for a demonstration. This piece is probably one of the easiest pieces that they use to teach their beginning xylophonists how to play. Now, the three notes are played four times for a total of 12 notes in the sequence. The 12 notes of the second part sound like this. Now both of these players combine their parts much like you would clasp your hands. First one plays a note and then the other. The third player has only two notes to play, however he must play these notes any time they occur in either of the two parts. In the first part he must play this. And in the second part he plays this note. Eventually, after they get the parts up to speed, he comes out with a rhythm that sounds like this. And now we'd like to combine all three parts, starting slowly at first and gradually getting them to the speed that the African musicians play it. Xylophone is called amadinda and plays the basic melodic material upon which the song is built and upon which the singer would improvise. Actually, the singing is made up of two parts, a lead singer and a chorus. The total piece is made up of the rhythm played by the drums and rattles, the melodic material played by the xylophone, and the singing which comprises or which is comprised of the lead singer and the chorus. The piece which we are leading up to in the non casa dance is called Sematimba Nichiquabanga and is a much more complex piece than the one you just heard. It contains an 18 note row and when put together sounds like this.
And now that you've heard the xylophone, the drums, and the rattles, we're leading up to the final culmination of the non casa dance. But before we can do this, we have to add one more very important ingredient, and that's the singing. Singing and clapping, which is such an important part of the Baganda music. And for this, we're very fortunate to have an old friend of mine that I met in Uganda, and who is here in the United States, and has graciously came down to sing with us here on this program. I'd like to introduce Father Charles Luanga. Charles, it's nice to have you with us. Nice to meet you, Phil. Especially to sing with us today. Thank you very much. I wonder if you might not go into some of the background of the piece that we're going to do, which is Sematimba Nichikwabanga. Right. Pleased to say a few words about this uh, song, which goes as far back as 1850s, when King Suna II of Buganda uh, had an army, and an army declared war on the next tribe, you know. And in this army, there were two young men uh, who were very brave. And they had a goat, you see, so they went to fight, at least expecting that they would die on the part of France, you see. And they, before they left for the war, they told their folks at the home that they should fatten the goat so that when they came back with victory, they would eat this goat, you see, and so they went to fight. But very unfortunately, as they were fighting, uh, they were victims, they died, you know, and news was brought to the country that uh, the two young men, brave men in the army, died. And so this is a song with the wisdom of the African Ganda music telling and bewailing at the same time the loss of these two men in this army. Uh, we see that the first harpist, the greatest we've heard so far, to our knowledge, uh, James uh, Mayanja, uh, did uh, sing and harp at this song, and he was uh, the instructor of Timoteo Mukasa. Timoteo Mukasa is also dead, and he too was a great uh, harpist. But we now kind of sing this song uh, as it were on a skeleton of music. Not, of the, music. not in the same, quite the same way that they No, do. no, by no, no means. I and so uh, this is what we're going to perform tonight, and I'm pleased to be here with your feet. Very good. I wonder if we might not try the singing first before we put it with the drums and the xylophone, huh? Well, I'm glad to. Maybe a little practice. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Good. We've got to be clapping along with it. All right, thank fine. You. Very good, Charles. Thank you. And now for our grand finale, getting the drums, the xylophone, the shakers, and you singing Sematimba Nichikwabanga. Thank you very much.
Oh, Charles, that was just great. That was wonderful. Marvelous. Well, thank you very much. It was so wonderful for you to be here with us today. And you know that last section when it went into Mogala and things got really going? Right. right. It's too bad we couldn't have had the dancers there to dance, yeah, huh? That's, that's right. the only thing we were lacking. That's right. Well, I really appreciate you coming down here. I want to thank you, members of the ensemble, for doing such a great job. Thank you very much, Dave. And uh, I would like to say a few words, just a few words, you see, to thank you and thank the members of the ensemble for this great music because uh, it's really music that goes down deep down in my heart. You it's see. sure and music. It really reminds right. me of my home back, you know, in Africa, right. where we meet, and at least I expected I would meet you here right. and sing with you and sing to the audience. You see, thank you very much. You're welcome, and thank you for being with us. <laughs>